Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ktor Server Fundamentals playlist. In the previous video, we explored the Status Pages plugin. Today, we are diving into request validation in Ktor. So, let's start by understanding what request validation is and why it's important. In any backend application, it's crucial to validate the incoming data to ensure it meets expected formats and constraints. This helps prevent errors and improve security. In Ktor, we can achieve this efficiently by using the request validation plugin, which allows us to define validation rules for incoming request. Next, we will set up the request validation plugin in our Ktor application. We'll install and configure it. After that, we will explore how to catch validation exception using status pages plugin, which we configured in the previous video. Finally, we will learn how to scope the request validation to any specific routes. So, now let's begin by adding request validation plugin dependencies. For that, we can head over to version catalog file. We can find that within this Gradle package. We can simply duplicate this last line and we can say request validation. request validation here as well we can head over to build gradle kts file then we can simply duplicate this line and we can say request dot validation and simply sync the project Now we can move to plugins package and we can create a new file. Let's name it request validation. We can see it as file. Then we can create an extension function. And we can simply install the plugin using install function. Then we can say request validation. And that's it. We are successfully installed this. Now we can simply copy this function. And within this application, we can invoke this function. We can import this. Now within this routing file, let's create a simple route for understanding how can we validate some string data in the request body. So let's say we have a post request. Let's give it a path. Let's say message. And we will simply receive a string value in this request. So we can say something like call.receive and the type will be string. In response part, let's simply respond with this text. So, now in case you want to run some validation for this string, what we can do is we can simply move to this request validation file and here we have validate. So, what we can do is let's for now our we are receiving data of type string. So what we can do, we can define validate for string type. So, and within here, we receive the body, the content. And we can do bunch of handling over here, like validation over here. We can simply say if body is null or blank, it will simply be if is blank, then we can simply return we can simply say validation result dot invalid and what we can say is masses cannot be empty else what we can say is else we can simply say validation result dot valid so now in status pages what we can say is we like we in case of invalid, we are returning this invalid regions. 
So what we can do is within this status pages plugin, we can cache the validation errors. So for that, we, we can say exception and within here we can define validation. We can say request validation exception. In the similar way, we will be getting call and cause. In response, we can simply respond with we can respond with let's say it will be bad request and for body what we can say we can simply map errors to causes dot reasons maybe so if validation plugin throws any error within this status pages plugin we are handling that error like we are simply responding with the errors so for the first time let's comment this out and let's try this out so we can see some difference over here let's make the request as you can see we are getting uh, okay even for empty so even if we add something we'll still get success so what we can do is we can uncomment this one and rerun the application again now since it is not empty we are getting success but in case if it's empty we get our validation error like message cannot be empty now in case you want to add some more validation like let's say we want to add one more block and we want to say that if body dot starts with if body doesn't starts with hello then we will say invalid message Let's quickly rerun the application. Now first it will return this and if we type something random it will say invalid message. So that's it for this normal data type primitive type. So we, we can do handling for integer floats double in the same way. So now let's move to the other type. Let's say we are receiving objects like JSON objects. So let's create a data class. Let's say product. Within this product, let's have a product name. It will be of type string. Let's create a price. It will be of type integer. And let's have one more for category it will also be a string so let's have a request let's say post request and we allow to create new product so let's say let's give a path product then to receive this type of object we'll need to mark this as serializable we can import this one and we can simply receive this product using call.receive and say product. So in response as well, let's respond with this product. Now let's quickly rerun the application. We can say product and this will be raw json and over here we can say name price and category so okay price will be of type integer so let's have zero so now as you can see this uh, 
name is blank category is blank price is also zero so to add some validation logic for this type of json objects what we can do is we can move to this uh, request validation plugin and we can add a validate block for that as well so we are validating product so over here what we can do is we can simply receive that body using this let's reference it by naming body and let's add few logic so let's say if body dot name is null or blank in that case we will return invalid response so we can we will say invalid product name similarly for category as well invalid product category and for price as well we will say if price is equal to equal to null or body dot price is less than or equal to zero in that case as well we'll say invalid price here instead of it let's have else if so even if one case fails we need to return invalid res response immediately and in case of else what we can say validation result dot valid so now if we could rerun the application we will be seeing error like for we are validating name so we will get error for name now again if we send still our category is empty now if we validate category as well now still our price is also zero so this way we can validate our json objects as well now let's suppose we have two routes receiving same type of uh, body but we want to have different type of validation logic for both so in that case let's suppose we have two route for message one is message one and one is message two so in both route we are receiving a string but let's suppose we want to have different validation logic in message one route then message route two so for that what we can do we can scope the validation logic within the route as well so we can take this validation and what we can say is we can simply add this route function we can give it a path message one within here we can say install request validation and within this block we can move this validation logic and we can simply say post and message so now this validation logic is scoped to every request within this route route block so if we have get request as well within this route and that receive the same data like a string then it will have this same validation logic so this validation logic so now for message two as well we can simply copy this one and paste it over here now let's say message two and for this let's suppose if it is start if it doesn't starts with high then we will return invalid message we can remove this one so here what we are doing is we are scoping the validation logic to a specific route block so since both of them are having same data type as a request body so it might conflict so to handle that conflict we can scope the request validation plugin to route so now if we run this application
and let's say we have message one we can send this it will say invalid so if it starts with hello then it is successful but if we try hi or anything else it will say error but for message two it will be successful since for message two we have validation logic as it starts with hi and for message one we have validation logic with start value of hello so this way we can scope the validation as well so that's it for this video in the next video we will be diving into rate limiting in ktor until then thanks for watching and happy coding